Hello everyone! I am here to talk to you about an ambitious research project we have undertaken at the University of Thessaly with the code name Project Art Reef. First of all, just to get your bearings, our department is located in the city of Volos, one of the major metropolitan areas in central Greece and probably the most beautiful. I am pretty sure that by the end of this video you will decide to come and see for yourselves in the near future. Now, before we get into the details in regards to the project, please allow me to quickly introduce myself. My name is Alexios Lolas and I was recently awarded my PhD. Since then, I work as a postdoc researcher in the Department of Ichthyology and Aquatic Environment and also I am giving some lectures on several under and postgraduate courses as a teaching assistant. As you can probably tell, I am a passionate and very active scuba diver. In fact, my love for the sea and my passion for diving were the decisive factors that led me to focus my studies on underwater life and the marine environment in general. But I will not bore you with further personal details. Instead, let's just take a breath and dive in the details of Project Arch Reef, dive into mythology. So, in a very few words, Project Art Reef is essentially an artificial reef filled with works of art. Well, not that kind of art, but uh, we'll get to that shortly. For those of you who are not familiar with the term, an artificial reef is a man-made structure that may mimic some of the characteristics of a natural reef. Anything that ends up at the bottom of the sea, either by choice or by accident, acts as an artificial reef since nature does not discriminate. The scientific approach to artificial reef focuses on deploying complex geometrical shapes or abstract constructs to counteract alarming trends in the degradation of coastal water, losses in subtitle habitats and the plunging of fish stocks. What these constructs do is that they provide enough surface area for the establishment of settling organisms, for example sponges, tube worms, algae, and also sufficient cavities for free-living species like an octopus, say, or large fish like groupers. There are lots of scientific studies regarding the appropriate materials and shapes for reefs, but they all draw the same conclusion. Artificial reefs are beneficial to the marine environment. When deployed on barren sandy bottoms, they eventually transform them to live and booming reefs. And to put that in context, imagine how many people would move into a new city if it was built in the middle of the desert. Right now, it would be normal for anyone to consider, well, that's great to know, but where is the art in all of that? Well, this is where our project puts the art to the reef. We can all agree that in terms of ecosystem management, this is great. It could also be considered an interesting underwater site. But there's nothing exciting or intriguing. After all, it's just a pile of cement blocks. Contrary to that, which I think is fascinating to say the least, I personally was overwhelmed when I first saw an article about this reef, but unfortunately I haven't had a chance to visit it yet. By the way, this is part of an underwater museum and the excellent works of the famous sculptor Jason de Caris Taylor, located in the waters surrounding Cancun in Mexico. Now, even though it is logical for someone to assume that these eye-capturing sculptures are beneficial to the marine environment in a similar way as the conventional cement blocks or complex shapes, still, no study has justified or quantified this correlation yet. By definition, they are an artificial reef, but do they act like one? How about the potential impact of the increased number of divers visiting such reefs to the reef itself? Do they affect its natural development and to what extent? Is there a possibility to use underwater sculptures for environmental and recreational purposes in a sustainable manner for both? All these and other questions, along with the lack of scientific data to provide some answers, was the motive which led us to the concept of Project Art Reef. What we plan on doing is to create two artificial reefs with underwater sculptures. One will act as the control site, where only members of our research team will be allowed to dive, whereas the other will be the main diving attraction, free for everyone. 
with the collaboration of uh, the local diving shops and the individual divers, we hope to log almost every dive in order to gather relevant data and estimate the extent of the diving footprint at the free site. That data will be correlated to the findings regarding the development of both reefs in order to search for potential differences between the two sites. Another factor we are going to estimate is the potential change to fish stocks in the vicinity of both sites. We are also planning on estimating and quantifying the social and economic impact of the reef on the local community due to the anticipated influx of divers. Following the directives and guidelines of the London Convention and Protocol for the placement of artificial reefs, we will be actively monitoring the reefs for at least three years after their deployment. During the whole course of the project, we will also be filming and preparing a small video documentary which will be freely distributed to the public, showcasing several aspects of the project and the process from its conception to its completion. But where is the mythology in all that, you may ask? Well, the intriguing detail of the project is that the sculptures will follow a certain theme based on the local mythology, Jason and his legendary Argonauts and the centaurs of Mount Pelion. The concept is when you go diving in the reef, to have the feeling that you literally dive into mythology. Furthermore, in an attempt to maximize the involvement of the local community with the project, our first priority is the sculptures to be created by local artists. Of course, that does not mean that we will exclude anyone who might want to contribute, as long as the mythological theme is followed. Now, all these might sound great and look even greater, but for all these plans to be realized, one very important ingredient is required. Money. And lots of it. Well, unfortunately, Greece does not do well when it comes to government spending on research and development. Recent estimates put us way down on the list of 37 countries. Fourth from bottom is not a very prestigious place to be in such a list. As most of you already know, Greece is going through a long depression period due to the debt crisis which began in 2009 and still has not ended yet. All these factors make it hard to find a funding resource to raise the money needed for an ambitious project such as ours. After a lot of heated debates and long discussions with my colleagues, we agreed that the option of crowdfunding would be an interesting but also challenging way to raise that money. In fact, it seems viable since there is an interesting precedent during the critical negotiations for a Greek bailout plan in the summer of 2015, an English student started a campaign on Indiegogo and managed to raise almost 2 million euros in just 8 days. So, this is why we started our fundraiser campaign, hoping for even the smallest of contributions. Besides, it is the number of people who contribute that matters, not the amount they donate. For any questions, suggestions or remarks, don't hesitate to contact us. You can support our project by either donating directly or spreading the word with your friends. It goes without saying that you are more than welcome to visit the city of Volos, either in the winter or during the summer. And if everything goes as planned, you can even go for a dive or a boat cruise at the Art Reef. Thank you all for watching.